Uh, we want to go ahead and get to callers? Yeah, let's go. So, Rory in Vancouver, thanks for holding. Hey, guys, how's it going? Pretty well. All right. Good. Uh, um, I'll just start by saying I'm a big uh, fan of the show. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank and you. And I keep up with good work. Thanks. So, I'll, uh, I'll keep it quick. I'm an atheist. Um, and my question is basically about finding the right way to approach people about their beliefs. Because there's a big spectrum of, um, of actions you can take. You know, Peter Bogosian would argue that you should go into churches and start you know, attacking people's beliefs right there, and other people would argue that you should just let people believe what they want. Wait, so wait. I, you're, saying, you're saying Pete would advocate walking into people's churches and attacking their beliefs in the church? I've read this in his book called The Manual for Creating Atheists. Yeah, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't finished it. I, I don't... Yeah, that I, doesn't sound right. It, it, could be that, it could be that he's actually advocating that. I, I'll, I'll talk to him because we've spoken yeah. several times. Um, but I would not advocate walking into somebody's church and disrupting their service to tell them why you think they're wrong. No, exactly, and neither would I. That's the problem I'm having here because the, the problem in general is that having unfounded views um, gives all extreme views a form of legitimacy. That's what he's arguing and what the four horsemen are also arguing. So my question is generally, how do you be proactive um, like, where is the, the proper place to draw the line? You know, like, sure. on the one you've got tolerance completely. On sure. the other hand, you've got going and attacking people um, directly. So, like, what, is, what do you think is the best uh, way to be proactive about that? Sure, and, and I'll let both of us kind of take a swing at that real quick. Um, mm -hmm. We take incoming calls. I don't make outgoing calls. I don't, I don't go around knocking on people's doors or walking into their churches saying, you know, hey, have you stopped believing in Jesus or, or Allah yet? I can fix that. Um, you, my, my general rule is to engage people at the level that they're comfortable being engaged. If I hear somebody praying at the table next to me at a restaurant and dinner, I'm not going to go over and tell them how silly it is for them to be praying. Um, but if they ask or they strike up a conversation, I'm going to be honest and I will defend rigorous, rigorously and uh, without mercy attack fallacies and irrationality wherever they're presented. Um, the, my, this is the podium. You know, this yeah. is uh, this and producing information, getting it out there, is to make sure that people who are interested in having the conversation um, can be a part of it. Yeah, right. and, that, and that's basically, you know, my thought is that if you knock on my door, you're fair game, you know, and it's on. You knock on my door to preach to me or to tell me about the good news or something like that, it's on. And you better hope you didn't wake me up or interrupt something important because, yeah. you know, I'm moody. Um, and my problem now is that I, I can't actually get, like, the Jehovah's Witnesses to knock on my door anymore. I think they've got my house, like, there's an X on my house or something <laughs> on their map because they don't come by anymore. You are the, the Jehovah's and, Witness equivalent of Scientology's <laughs> suppressive person. I am like Satan incarnate for those guys. So, that, you know, they don't come by anymore. And, and kind of the same thing with the Mormon missionaries. They don't come over anymore. You know, scary lesbian that lives there. I know, ordered so. a copy of the... <laughs> <laughs> That's where the scary lesbian lives. Stay yeah. away. Yeah. I ordered a copy of the Book of Mormon, and one of the things that they do is they follow up with a phone call. And I actually had like a two-hour conversation with this young Mormon boy on uh, about Mormonism, uh, and he had, you know, he listened uh, and um, said that he'd check out the show. Now I don't know what happened to him, but um, Beth has engaged Jehovah's Witnesses when they come knocking on our door. Um, yeah. But I mean, I don't, I don't like hang out outside of the Jehovah's Witnesses Kingdom Hall and accost them as they're walking in, you know, for their services yeah. or anything. I, you know, I don't, First of all, it's private property. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. what, and, and, and I'm not necessarily condoning going to attacking, you know, to directly challenge people in their own places, right? Like, like right. Matt has said before, the ability to swing my arms ends at their nose. Um, but the fact remains that a lot of the views that are out there are very harmful for society in general. Sure, sure. And, and, uh, and you should exercise your free speech rights. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that you wait around for the conversation. There's plenty of ways to be proactive, like the mm -hmm. National Day of Prayer, one of the responses is the National Day of Reason. And there are atheists who will stand out there at the Capitol, uh, excuse me, with signs and advocating for reason, reason and standing in opposition um, to violations of church state separation and the preferential treatment of uh, religion and prayer and, and just religiosity in general in the country. 
Um, we need people who are out and outspoken. Um, the out campaign, uh, and, and you know, I'm not I'm not sure about your your take on uh, Pete, but I have, haven't read that part, so I'll, I'll take a look. But um, I, I and I don't know all four of the four horsemen, but I can say that um, I, I don't get anything from what they've said that they would be advocating for walking into people's churches or you know creating disruptions of that sort. The out campaign is to encourage people to be out, to speak out, to act out, but that doesn't include yeah. uh, kind of the sort of belligerent marching into churches to, to tear down the crosses type. That's well, bizarre. Well, yeah, not only that, but it, it's not even, so, it, this is not behavior that we would tolerate in the atheist community of Austin. Mm. It, at our events, we've always said that you know if you're atheist or atheist friendly, you're welcome to come to any of our events, but you know, if you're there to preach, proselytize, or provoke, or punch in, in some cases, you're not welcome there. And, you know, I, if someone showed up and tried doing something like that, I'd have no qualms at all about removing them, you know, by whatever uh, means, up to and including calling the police. Yeah, we, we go to, after dinner, we'll, we'll be going to, it's El Arroyo, I El Arroyo, think. yeah. Um, and so if some theist came up there and wanted to have a discussion, I'm all in favor of it. Yeah. Um, as long as that discussion is not disrupting the dinner or, or bothering everybody else, in yeah. which case that discussion needs to move somewhere else. Um, but if somebody shows up to just preach, then we're going to remove them. Yeah. No, I agree, with, I agree with you. And I'm just, I'll finish off by saying that um, I'm not saying that the Four Horsemen in, endorse going into churches or anything, but that they're challenging the taboo of not asking those questions because that's what I'm trying to get at is that you should really, you know, yeah. the time superstition and, and um, tolerating these, you know, unquestioned beliefs is sort of, you know, what I'm trying to get. Yeah, I, yeah. I am not in any way an accommodationist, and I am not in any way the uh, advocating the kind of, uh, oh, sit back and let them have their religion. No, yeah. I, I think that, I think there's a distinct lack of empathy in that position as well, which is um, not only do I care about the truth, but I care about what kind of world I live in, and I care about other people. And so if they have beliefs that are harmful to themselves and others, then I feel that I have kind of a moral obligation to some extent um, to address that. Now, I can't force the conversation on somebody who's unwilling to have it, um, but I will make it very clear that I'm willing to have that conversation at the drop of a hat. Right, and that was really what I was, that you asked my question basically, is how cool. to be proactive. So um, thanks very much for your, your feedback. Thanks, Roy. And, uh, right. Appreciate it. Great job. Thanks.